Okay, welcome back. So let's take a look at some factoring techniques. In this lesson, we'll talk about the most basic of factoring techniques called common factors. Okay, here is our first example. In this uh, expression here, we have two terms. The idea is to find out what is the maximum number that you could divide out of both terms. In this case, we could take out a two. So if we divided each of the terms by two, what would be left over? Well, in the first term, if you divided two x by two, and I'll do that on the side here, two x divided by two is just x. And if we divided eight by two, you would get four. So there you have it. That is the factored form for this expression. Remember, you can check your answer by expanding. So if you do expand this, you would have two times x plus four, and that will leave you with two x, and of course two times four is eight. Let's take a look at some more examples, and through the series of examples I show you, you should become proficient at this type of factoring. In this next question, you can see that both terms indeed are divisible by two. But when it comes to factoring, you want to take out the maximum possible factor. So yes, they both divide by 2, but is there a better number? What is the largest number that you can think of that divides both into 12 and 16? And that number is 4. So make sure that you try to get that largest number out. If we extract a 4, what would be left over? Well, if you divide 12 by 4, you get 3. So that's 3x squared. And if you divide 16 by 4, you get 4. And there you have it. Of course, you could check that this is correct by multiplying or distributing the 4 back into the brackets, as we showed in the previous video. Here's another example. Really, uh, these questions come down to how fast you are with your arithmetic. So in this question, the expression has terms that are divisible by 3. So we could divide a 3 out, leaving us with an x and a negative 5. How do you know it's right? You could multiply through by 3 to confirm that you have 3x and negative 15, because expanding would get you back to where you started. Here's a more complex expression. Here we have three terms. Again, look for a number or an expression, I should say a term, that is divisible in all three of the terms here. So when I look, they don't all share an x, but they do all share a 5. So we can take a 5 out. That leaves us with the 2 here, because 10 divided by 5 is 2. Of course, there's an x squared. Again, 10 divided by 5 is 2. And finally, 15 divided by 5 is 3. And there is a negative sign as well. This term here, this expression here, I should mention, it is possible that it can be factored. But I'm not going to investigate that at this point. I assure you, though, that this expression, as presented here, is in its factored form. Oh, lots of variables. Okay, I think that these ones are actually quicker than the ones with numbers that are given because it's easier to just look at the letters or the variables, I like to say letters sometimes, and look for what's common. So both of these expressions, what do they share? Well, they don't share a coefficient other than one, but you can see that they both have a C. If we take that C out, what would be left over? Well. You can imagine that this C here disappeared. Imagine that these C's here just disappeared. Because that's what I do. I just make them invisible. And that is the answer. Of course, you don't just throw them away. So let me just reveal them back again. And you can check your answer by just distributing the C into that bracket. And of course, you will get the original expression. Remember, though, to take out as much as you can as possible. Okay, here's the next example. 
Notice that in this expression, all the terms are divisible by two, and x is common to all of the terms. So we can take out a two and an x. What does that leave us with? Well, it leaves us with here, well, the two divides out, leaving us with x squared. And in this term, the four divided by two gives us two. An x squared is initial, but we've taken an x out, so we're left with an x. Finally, if we have six x here and we divide out a two x, we're left with a three. You can actually try this question out on the side as follows. Three separate fractions. I will experiment with different ways to do these types of questions, but I think that this one is probably the most uh, structured way that I can do it. If you take a look at the first expression, the twos cancel and the x's reduce to x squared because you subtract the exponents. Here, the four divided by the two gives us a two and the x squared and the x to the one have exponents that subtract to give you x to the one or just x. Finally, here the six and the two become a three when you divide them and the x's just cancel out. So you can see all of those terms appearing in their precise order in this expression. So these two terms share both a two and an x, but not just an x, an x squared. Notice that the lowest power of x is 2 and that's what you're looking for how about the y well they don't have they don't both have a y so that's why you don't have to worry about factoring out a y sometimes you might get overwhelmed by this type of example because you might lose track of what's left over but it's two separate thoughts first the numbers and then the variables so let's see what I do here what's 10 divided by 2 5 Okay, there's a variable part. Leave it alone for a second. What is six divided by two? Three. See, I deal with the numbers first, the coefficients, and then let's deal with the variables. So if I have x to the three, and I divide out an x squared, I'm left with an x. If you multiply it back, you see that x squared times x is x to the three. Over here, I took out the x squared, so it's gone but the y still remains. If you expand these out and distribute the 2x squared into the brackets, you should recover the original expression. All right, you're almost there. I got, a, I think, a few more to go. Yikes, uh, <laughs> this one looks like the entire alphabet's being thrown at you, but don't worry, let's, let's take it piece by piece. I mean, as long as you're organized and you do things, so to speak, alphabetically, you should be okay. Let's start with the number. Okay, uh, well they both, the first two terms have a three and negative six is also divisible by three. So we can take a three out. I'd like you to see something here. I'm gonna stagger it and put a bracket like this. And it looks a little bit weird, but it actually is easier to follow along and track what's going on. Let's talk about the a's. We have a to the three, a to the two, and just an a. The one that is the least power is the a, so you just take an a out. How about the b's? Well, there's a b here, a b here, and a b squared. The lowest power of b is one, so I'm gonna take a b out. Do they, have all, do they all have a c? Well, no, so then don't take a c out. So what's left over? The reason I lined up the bracket is because I can actually Imagine a little table, and you can see it here on the side. I want you to think of it as a table. And what I'm doing is, I'm just vertically aligning the quotient as I divide out the 3AB. So if I divide out 3AB from this, the three is divided out. I took out an A, which means A squared is left over, and I took out the B, so the B's gone. The plus sign really is like a separator, if you like. Here I took out the three, I took out an A, but there's still an A left over. I took out the B, but I didn't take out the C. So that's why the C is still there. Finally, the minus sign, and if I divide six by three, I get two. I took out the A, I took out one of the Bs, but not all of them, 
because there's one left over. And of course, I didn't take out any C's, so I have a C right here. Notice that if I expand, I should get back the original expression. And look at that. You're almost on pace to finish off this lesson. Okay. One more to go. I think that this one here is just a, a continuation of the previous one. We have to ad address both the coefficients and the variables, and we'll do it systematically. I'll stagger the equal sign over here, put some brackets that line up nicely with the original expression, and I'll go in three steps. First the number, and then the x's, and then the y's. So 12, negative 12, and 4, they all have 4 in common. How about the x's? We have a cube, a squared, and just x to the 1. So x to the 1 is the lowest of the powers. Finally, the y's. Here we have y cubed, y fourth, and y seventh power. So we will go with the y cubed, which is the lowest power of y. And finally, we can divide out 4xy cubed from each of those terms. 12 divided by 4 is 3 x to the 3 divided by x is x to the 2 and we took out all the y cubes so they're gone 12 divided by 4 is 3 I just wrote the negative sign ahead of time x squared divided by x is x and y to the 4 divided by y to the 3 is just a y finally I took out the 4 I took out the x but I didn't take out all the y's I took out three of the y's I still have to put four of them over here and that is the factored form for this expression. There is the possibility in future questions that each of the examples that we see could go further. However, for these initial nine questions that we've covered, common factoring is the only type of factoring that is available. So we will see some of those more advanced examples later. Next in the, in the list of type of factorings that I'd like to cover with you, is the method called grouping. Stay tuned.